three. Uh, today's lesson, you guys, I love this lesson. Um, we're talking about the zero property product, and I think it brings a light here. So let's get started right away. What we're talking about is we're moving from if you're given a, or an equation for a quadratic um, uh, equation here, a graph. So uh, zero property, what does that truly mean? So we're just going to kind of get into this, and forgive me as I just move into this here. But we're going to look at this one right here. Y equals X squared minus 2X minus uh, 15. Hold on, I need to grab a different pen. just want to highlight for you. Oh, this would be nice. My smart board would work much sure here. Oh, good. Spinning beach ball of death. We oh, so there we go. Now it's a little better. I want a highlighter. Oh, this is really lovely. There we go. All right. So this is the equation we're working on right there. Isn't that nice? Okay. Now back up here. All right. So this is the equation we're working on right there. And so if I factor that one out, I need two factors of negative 15 that add up to negative 2. So hopefully you understand that this becomes y equals... The factors of this would be x minus 5 and x plus 3. Okay, so these two factors right here become this. Now, what we did yesterday, if you remember the balloon toss yesterday, we were learning when it started out and when it landed. Started out and it landed. And you notice the start out point and the landing points all occurred on the X axis. Okay? When it hit this point right here, when it hits the graph and it's at here on the X axis, you might know that your Y value of that is zero. Okay? So that's when Y equals zero. So let's just do that right here. Let's rewrite this equation as zero. We plug in a zero for Y equals X minus five and x plus 3. So now, in order to solve for this, where it literally falls on the x-axis, the zero property product means we take those two, the x minus 5 and the x plus 3, and we set those equal to zero. So I'm going to do that right over here. We're going to take the x minus 5, set that equal to zero, and we're also going to take the x plus 3, and set that equal to 0. When we do so, and we add 5 to both sides, you should all see how we get x equals a positive 5. So it equals the opposite of this. Which means over here, x would equal negative 3. Hopefully that makes sense to you. Right there, I'm going to bold those so you can kind of see them, and we're going to put those in a nice fun color. Hey, red, perfect, that'll send the message. All right, so that is what we get for that one. And you'll notice on this graph right here, where does it cross the y -ax or the x-axis? Cross at positive 5, which we got from right here, and it crosses at negative 3, which we got from right here. So the zero property product just means we take the two factors that we got, we set those equal to zero, and we solve for our x-intercepts. So those become our x-intercepts. You know, one thing I have not done before this is really talk about how do we get the line of symmetry. And I don't know if that comes up later, but I'm just going to explain it to you real quickly here. Sorry if this comes up red, but line of, not odd, of symmetry. hope I spelled that right. The line of symmetry is what point takes place exactly in the middle. You'll see from these two x-intercepts, the symmetry always is right smack dab in the middle. So how do you find this? Well, here's how you do it. You just literally take the average of the two points you have. So you take your 5, and you add your other point, which in this case is negative 3, and you take that whole thing here. We have to do this part first, so put that in parentheses. And then you divide that amount by how many numbers? Well, 2. 5 plus 3 is 2, and 2 divided by 2 equals 1. So my line of symmetry here, and here's how you'd label this, is x equals 1. What that means 
is at this one spot right here. You'll notice if I draw a straight line, that's where this parabola becomes a mirror image of itself. So the line of symmetry is when x equals 1. Oh, and by the way, if you ever want to find what is the vertex right here then, you could go back to the original equation right here, plug in your line of symmetry, x equals 1, and solve for your y-coordinate down here. We'll need to do that when we get into a lot more difficult uh, parabolas. So, um, but that's kind of what you do there. So I now type your line of symmetry and the zero property product. Well, let's do another example of this. Um, I'm going to just go through a couple quickly because I don't think 60 has one. Oh, it does have one. Perfect. 2x squared plus 5x minus 12. Now, if you plug this in, uh, if you plug this into your generic rectangle, your diamond and rectangle, and you solve, okay, we're going to get the factors of y equals, oh, let's see if I can figure this one out quickly. It's going to be a 2 plus 4 and minus 3. Perfect. So we've got 2 2x plus 3, no, minus 3, and we also have x plus 4. By the way, if you don't know how I kind of do that so quickly on this kind of one, here's what I look at. I know that the th negative 3 and the positive 4 make up my negative 12 when I multiply them together. The 2x and the 1x make up the 2x. And then I just do 2x times 4 is a positive 8x. Negative 3 times positive x is negative 3x. So positive 8x and negative 3x equals out to be a positive 5x. If you don't understand that, come and see me. But now, back to our zero property product. Again, we talk about zero property being when y equals 0. So we set this equal to 0. And by the way, when you do this originally, you don't always have to put a y there. If you put the 0 there right away, I get it. So you can do that. Um, but I, I'm demonstrating just so you can see where it clearly comes from. So we're going to take the 0 equals our 2x minus 3 and our x plus 4. And we're going to do our work for that. So I take my 2x minus 3 equals 0, and I'm going to take my x plus 4 equals 0. The first one is the harder one in this one. We've got to add 3 to both sides, so we've got 2x equals 3. The second one is actually very simple. We get our answer right away for this one, which is x equals negative 4. That was easy. But going back to our one here. When we divide by 2, x will equal 3 halves, or 1.5. So, hold on, I'm pausing you for a moment here. Okay, sorry about that, but I'm back now. Alright. Oh, come on. There we go. So your answers here, for this one, again, we'll make these a nice, fun red color. Bold and red. Alright, so on these, what I want you to notice about is you see the part that's being added to the x? Well, your answer always becomes the opposite sign of that. So if it's plus 4, it becomes minus 4. Because this one was a minus 3, this became a positive answer. So that's what dictates whether it's a positive or negative answer. And then you're going to notice that this number here that's added or subtracted becomes your top number. And the number that's being multiplied by the x becomes your denominator. So something for those of you that, that think quickly on that kind of stuff can think about that. If you're over here going, yeah, but what about this one? This would literally be negative 4 over 1. Simplified is just negative 4. And here is your positive 3, the opposite of that, divided by this number 2 right there. So a nice little quick way of doing that. These, by the way, are called your roots. Your zero property product gets you the roots of this. And by the roots of that... That means where it crosses the x-axis on that. All right, let's see if there's much more I want you to do here. We are not going to do that page. And I think we already did Yeah, we already talked about the roots here. Here you can see the 3 halves, or the 1.5, is where this one crossed. And the negative 4 is where this one crossed right there. So we came up with that one. Um, question 63. If we do this one real quickly, you might notice that this becomes x plus 3, 
x minus 2. So if I write that down, 0 equals x plus 3. I'll forget my parentheses. And x minus 2. So real quickly, you guys think about that. What are my x-intercepts? You should have got x equals negative 3 for the first one, and you should have got x equals positive 2 for the second one. When you write out your answers there, right there is how you write these out. Put this in a blue color. So when you write down your two answers, that is how you do it, if that makes sense to you. All right, let's see if we got one more to do here. I don't want to do that one. There's something else going on there I don't want to talk about. So I do want to go back to one other thing then. I'm just going to re reiterate. So if you would write your answer for this very first one we did here, where x equaled 5 and x equaled negative 3, how you would have written that truly should have been written x equals 5 and x equals negative 3. Some might ask, is it a certain order it should go in? No, no. It's, if you wrote x equals negative 3 and x equals 5, that's fine. For our second one that we did right here, you would have written our answer here. Come on. Thank you. As obviously would have been x equals negative 4, comma, x equals positive 3 halves. Hopefully that makes sense to you. And uh, that is your zero property product. We will see you in class tomorrow. Bye-bye.